Hey guys, are you the type of player that's uh, intimidated by chord charts sometimes or need to refer to a chord dictionary when you're kind of thinking of how to play a chord or you just can't remember how to play certain chords? Then in this lesson, I'm going to show you a way that you can do away with your chord dictionary and you'll never have to worry again about kind of knowing how to play any chord uh, on the guitar. So this, um, this is all about knowing, I guess, chord construction and your intervals. You don't have to know that right now to kind of get a benefit for the lesson, but if you want access to kind of a handout I've got like for loads of different kind of chord formulas, come on over to the Patreon and you'll get access to that. And also your knowledge of intervals in the fingerboard, that's something we're working on at the Patreon right now with uh, the Patreon study group, so you can come over and check that out as well if you're a little bit unfamiliar with those. But if you do have a good handle on what intervals are, you know how certain chords are constructed, then this is a, a great way of taking stuff that you know and adapting it to play other kind of chords. So what I mean by that is, let's take, um, let's take go from first principle, let's take an open E major chord. Okay, so even if you know how to play an open E major, you can get benefit from this lesson. So that we know we can shift about and kind of bar, you know, so I can play like an A bar chord here. If I strip that back down a little bit and play it almost kind of Hendrix style, so I've kind of got this like A triad here, and then my thumb is going to play the bass. So what we're go we've got here in this chord is my thumb is playing a root note of A, then I've got my third finger playing a root note up here, up an up octave. Then this middle finger is playing a major third interval on the G string there, and then my first finger is playing a perfect fifth on that B string. Yeah, and that's what makes up a major chord. You just need a root note, major third, and a perfect fifth. Yeah. Now I can adapt that to kind of play other kind of sounds. So if I wanted a minor chord, what I need to do is flatten the third to have a minor third, and that's why it's a minor chord. So that major third there goes back a fret, and I can play a minor chord like that. Yeah. Major chord, minor chord. Um, if I wanted to play an augmented chord, an augmented chords are really uh, cool, kind of, almost kind of uh, glue chords, passing chords. An augmented, basically, it's got a major third, but an augmented fifth. An augmented means you sharpen the fifth, so that note in the, f the fifth there goes up a fret, and I'd have that play it like that, or what's the different ways of playing it? Yeah, like that. Um, but that's the augmented sound. And that note typically links into you know, other chords. Yeah. So already you can see how you can take your knowledge of a major chord and start shifting the notes, like the um, the third and the fifth up and down effect to get different kind of harmonies. Now if I wanted to get into seventh, chord harmony, which is used a lot in jazz, obviously, but it crops up in a lot of pop and rock as well. What you need to do here is just take your root note. If I move that root note back one fret, I've changed it from a root note to a major seven interval now. And what I've now got is this chord, it's a root note, major seven, major third, and a perfect fifth. And that's a major seven chord. You know, it's typically the major chord in jazz. Yeah, very dreamy kind of sound. If I move that note that I moved to the major seven again back another fret to here, what I've now got is a flat seven or minor seven interval, and now I've got a chord that's a root note, minor seven, major third, and a perfect fifth. That is a seven chord, or dominant seven chord. So if you ever wondered what the difference between a major seven and a dominant seven chord, that's it there. You know, your dominant sevens, I've got this, the tritone interval is kind of bluesy tension to it you know, versus your dreamy major sevens. Yeah. So already if you take a major chord, move that note back one, you get major seven, move it back again, you get dominant seven. And quite a few songs actually do that. That kind of little progression. Yeah, Maybe do something like that. Now if I take um, that chord there, move the seven back one again, Got this chord here. So, though you know you can get a double flat seven, but not in this context, that would have moved that back to a sixth interval. As I said, if you're not comfortable with your intervals, um, that sort of knowledge um, we're looking at on uh, the Patreon group, as I said, but you can look it up everywhere as well. Um, just understanding what happens, what's the interval before a flat seven, etc. 
but that flat seven becomes a six and that chord there is actually a major sixth chord or sixth chord as I like to call them so it's a root note sixth I've got my third the five yeah. and that's all from just taking that root note moving it down there yeah if I go back to the major chord we got major seven um, we got dormant seven again and then flat in the third I've got that chord there so I've got root note flat seven, flat three, five, that's a minor seven chord, yeah. yeah, and if I wanted a minor six, I'd flatten that flat seven to make it a six and keep the other intervals the same, that's a minor six chord, really cool uh, minor chord that, yeah. so you can see uh, just by adjusting this, if I wanted to do um, another common chord uh, kind of from uh, Typically melodic minor theory is a minor major seven chord. It's kind of like the bond chord, so it's like taking a major chord, major seven, but it's got a minor third in it, so it sounds like this. Yeah, so I've got root note, major seven, minor third, fifth. Yeah. Okay, so that's all from this major chord here. Yeah, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven. So if you can remember how to play uh, just that major chord, and you know your chord formulas for all these sevenths, you can then adjust. Yeah. Another very common chord, um, if I take uh, the minor seven and then flatten the fifth, that their chord is a minor uh, seven flat five chord. Sometimes called half diminished, I prefer to call it minor seven flat five. Yeah. And then if I flatten the seven here, so in this context, that's not a sixth. Um, I says, I'm not getting into the details why that is, but that there is a diminished seventh chord. So it's like a minor seven flat five, but you've got a double flat seven, which is known as a diminished seventh interval. And that's the difference between a diminished seventh chord and a minor seven flat five. And that's why it's called half diminished, because that's like your full diminished. So that's all from this kind of shape here. If I wanted to get into a uh, kind of suspended chord, like sus twos, sus fours, what is a sus four? Well, pretty much you're taking your third, replacing it with a fourth. Where's a fourth interval? Well, it's just a half step above the third. So this chord here, to make it a sus four, would look like this. Yeah. This is a little bit awkward to do, but I could do like um, a sus two like this. Because it's A, I might just use the open A string. That'd be a kind of sus2 kind of sound. Yeah. yeah. So um, you could also play a, a sixth like this. Yeah. So what I've done there is I've taken the fifth and moved it up to sixth here. So that would be an A6 as well. And this idea about um, when you see the chord formulas, you'll tend to have, you know, some sort of root, third, fifth, seventh, depending, sixth, depending on the chord, what's going on. You don't always have to have all those intervals in the chord as long as you've got the essence of the chord, particularly in the guitar because we've only kind of got six strings. And that's really apparent when you start talking about like extended chords, so ninths and elevenths and thirteenths. So if you've got this shape here, yeah, we've got our root note at the top here. So a ninth interval is basically like a second above um, the kind of octave, but I always like to think of it as just like the second, so it's a tone away from a root note. So this chord here, I've played a major chord and then I've added that ninth interval and that's an add nine chord. Yeah. If I wanted to make it minor, minor add nine. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. If I've got the major seven part of it in that ninth in the top, that's a major nine chord because it's part of the major seven family. That'd be a ninth. So it's like your dominant seven with a nine, and then that'd be a minor nine. Yeah. So that's why you can get access to kind of ninth interval. The eleventh, well, eleventh is a little bit tricky because you don't really want to have an eleventh in with a chord with a major third because they're just a half step apart, so they kind of clash together. But you could play uh, this chord here. Yeah. So that's my major seven. And I've taken my fifth back one fret. And now that's a major seven sharp eleven chord, which might be pretty scary if you haven't seen those sort of chords before, or if you see it in a chord chart. But now you know you could take basically that five and move it back. Sometimes you'll see them written as a major seven flat five. Um, 
but if there is a fifth in that chord, which is sometimes implied, then it would be a sharp 11, because you can't have a 5 and a flat 5 in the same chord. As I said, I'm not going to get too deep into chord theory, but that's, you know, a good thing to uh, kind of remember, just moving it back for the sharp 11. Um, if I was to take the fifth and move it up to here with that major 7 shape, that'd be a major 13th. Yeah, so I've kind of got the major 7 essence, the major 3rd and the major 7 interval, and then I've added this 13th interval, which is the same as a 6th. Because I've got the seventh in it, it's a thirteenth. You know? That'd be a minor thirteen. Yeah, yeah that'd be a thirteen. So you see how you can take this idea. You know, um, all comes off this little shape that we're kind of starting with here. Um, if I wanted to get into kind of jazzy or kind of altered chords and all that sort of stuff, well, you know, that's my seven. That there could be like a sharp five. So that's an A7 sharp 5 or an augmented 7th, some people call them. Um, that's my 9th, that'd be a flat 9. That chord there, but an A7 sharp 5 flat 9. You know, all these big scary looking chords. But you can see that if you can see uh, these intervals re you know, related to this major kind of chord shape or the dominant 7, it's very easy to see that's a flat 9, that's a sharp 9. You know, and I could play like a... 7 sharp 9 like that. Sometimes you have to do a bit of finger gymnastics for some of them, but the essence of seeing how to play the chord is kind of relatively straightforward, yeah. Now you could do the same thing with a chord off the A string, so I was playing like an A major. I'm playing it as a D bar chord, say. So. I've got my root, my fifth, my root and my third. So you can do the same thing, a major 7, remember we take the root note, move it back one. Make a dominant 7, we flatten that again. Flatten it again, it's a 6th. You know, um, take uh, the dominant seven shape, but minor the third, so minor seven chord, flatten the fifth, minor seven flat five, flatten the seven again to double flat seven, diminish seventh, so you get a D diminished seventh chord. All the kind of same principle. So you're just knowing the kind of chord formula and then seeing these intervals to kind of adjust. Yeah. So see if you can do it um, with another kind of chord shape, think of like a C chord or D, uh, and kind of move it about. Um, it's also handy if you know your inversions. So an inverted chord, you've got like a third, fifth, whatever in the bass. Uh, for example, I could play like um, a chord like that. So uh, let's move it up here actually. Yeah, so it's a G, a G first inversion. Because so I've got B in the bass, which is the third, and I've got root, fifth, root. So if I move that root note back one, that's now a G major 7 with a B in a bass, so it's a G major 7 first inversion. Yeah, I could flatten that 7, that's a G7 would be in the bass, etc, you know. Um, so it allows you to take even just a kind of, if you know like a first inversion shape, which is probably the most handy, you can adjust all the intervals again to get in to all the kind of different chords, yeah. So that's the kind of principle of it guys. Um, it's one of these things that relies on, as I said, seeing these intervals in the chord, but by doing this, you kind of work in that process anyway, and knowing your chord formulas for things, which doesn't take too long. You know, it's it kind of logical as long as it's hopefully been explained kind of clearly. So if you want access to, as I said, the chord formula sheet that I've knocked up for this, come on over to the Patreon, you can get that. And I've just kind of listed all the chords and the formulas, and you can take these shapes and then kind of manipulate them about to get your different kind of chords. So, let me know what you think, guys. See how you got on with it. If if it's any kind of ha you know help at all, um, chord progressions and harmony and all that sort of stuff. The things we're talking about just over at the Patreon group with the kind of Patreon uh, study group, and um, we're talking about harmonic function and actual chord progressions. But this is a great way of getting into. Um, if you've got your chords laid out in front of you and being able to play it, particularly if you're wanting to get into kind of jazzier stuff where you've got a lot more sevenths or chords with a lot of numbers after the name, okay? So hopefully that was helpful, guys. Um, please comment below. And of course, if this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be kept up to date with any lessons upload. So go away, practice, have fun. <laughs>